Hello girls, welcome to the third of our lecture series on the examples of Hesed. Uh, this lecture will be on the story of Ruth. Now if you've never read this story, I highly recommend it. Um, we do not have a lot of examples in the Old Testament, uh, or the Bible for that matter, of women being the primary antagonist. But in this case, it's the story of the Hesed love this beautiful commitment between Ruth and her mother-in-law. And it's not just it's not just the mother-in-law. It's not a family thing. This is a friendship thing. They truly love each other and are great friends. And so um, you can read the book of Ruth. It's basically a short little novella. And um, it's in the our Catholic Bibles. It's really one of the historical books, but you'll find it in the Pentateuch with the um, first of the five books. And uh, it usually follows judges, and uh, it's also in our textbook on page 51. And the reason for that is because if you look at our timeline, where is Ruth happening? Well, we don't know when the book was written. It was probably an oral story um, that was carried along with them uh, for many uh, generations. And you know that the Bible mainly began coming together here during the Babylonian exile. Um, however, the book of Ruth takes place during the time of the judges. So you see the time of the judges right here, around 1100 uh, BCE. And here you see Ruth on the list. And uh, so the book of Ruth takes place during the time of the judges. This was the time before the great kings, but after the patriarchs, there were 12 judges in Israel. And this is a time when Israel was very tribal. And you could describe the judges as tribal chieftains. And often when we study the book of Judges, um, we look at the book of Ruth because it gives us sort of what was the daily life of an ancient Israelite like during this time frame. And basically they were living a tribal lifestyle, an agrarian lifestyle, but you'll also see um, in the book of Ruth, there's also um, when, when there's bad crops, that has to um, lead them to migrate. So uh, if we continue on, uh, what is the story about? It's uh, summary, it's the story of a Moabite woman. And if you look at the kingdom of Moab, is over here. She's a Moabite woman who had married an Israelite man who had left Israel. You see, um, this is this is all Israel here. Um, he was from Bethlehem, though, so it would have been the southern kingdom of Judah. Um, so she, this guy from Bethlehem, has to leave and go to Moab during a time of famine. He marries this Moabite woman. She converts to. Um, uh, his Hebrew faith in God, the God Yahweh, but what ends up happening uh, is uh, she and her sisters, uh, also married to um, the guy's uh, Israelite man, his brother, the men die, and the women are left destitute. And her mother-in-law, Naomi, wants to go back to her people in Israel. And that sets the stage for the story. Um, what will she choose? Will Ruth choose to leave her family behind? Um, and stay with her friend Naomi, and, and what ends up happening is, is Ruth um, loves Naomi. And so Ruth is the main character. You have Ruth and um, Naomi and Boaz. And so Ruth um, is this, this faithful friend, the faithful daughter-in-law. You have Naomi is the mother-in-law. And then, sorry this isn't writing very clearly the mother-in-law, and then Boaz will end up becoming um, Ruth's husband. He be, they fall in love and end up getting married in the story. So it has a beautiful happy ending. It has a love story as well. But here in this picture, you see Ruth and Naomi. And what happens is Naomi tells Ruth, don't go with me. My, You are not an Israelite. Um, your people don't follow our religion. Uh, you don't have to come with me. So don't dare think that the reason Ruth stays with Naomi is because this is her mother-in-law and she feels she has an obligation. Naomi releases her from that obligation and then you have what Ruth says to Naomi are some of the most tender words in all of scripture and they're often used when people take wedding vows. Ruth says to Naomi, she says, uh, do not press me to leave you or turn my back from following you. Wherever you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. Where uh, There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, even if death parts me from you. And so Ruth says to her mother-in-law, look, I'm staying with you. 
I, your people are my people. Your God is my God. I will never turn my back on you. And so this is the story of the powerful love of friends. This isn't just her mother-in-law. This is her friend. This is a woman who says, I'm going to die with you. And we see on the allegorical level the power of love between friends. And this is a foreshadowing of the love Jesus is going to have for us and for his disciples. And we see God's love for us, God's tested love for us, mirrored in this love that Ruth has for Naomi. And so, I mean, it's, it's just the most beautiful example. What more lovely words could one friend say to another? Um, and you see on a, on a moral level here, there's Ruth out in the field. What ended up happening was Ruth was gleaning the field. She was picking up the leftovers. Um, and she was such a woman of upright character and beauty that the owner of the field known just her, and his name was Boaz. And um, she was uh, showed herself to be of such good character, he fell in love with her because of that. And um, she ended up uh, marrying him in the end of the story, and they had a happily ever after. So if you like love stories, it's also this might be a good example for your project because it also has a little bit of a love story in it. But we see on a moral level, the good character is rewarded. He noted her um, because she had such high character. And um, you know, we see that the, uh, you know, on a moral level, good character is rewarded in the story. And on the um, eternal level, the anagogical level, it shows God tested, um, prefigured in Ruth, which will be perfected in Christ. So um, Christ will do what Ruth said she would do. He's going to die for us. So, um, and that's not just, um, it's, it's more than just symbolic, because Ruth is actually a great-grandmother of Jesus. She's the great-grandmother of King David. Her family tree is, uh, why this story about this woman? Why, why this story about this woman and not some other woman? Why did the Israelites say this story? Because she's the great-grandmother of David. Um, and so she's in Jesus' family tree. So we see in Jesus' family tree the example of this loving, generous woman, a woman of high moral character. Um, and we also see in Jesus' family tree a non-Israelite. Um, Jesus has this Moabite woman in his family tree. And so it shows you sort of the diversity of Jesus' family tree. He may be a descendant of David, but in David's family tree are not just Israelites, pure Israelites, but also the Moabite Ruth. So, make sure, uh, in review, make sure that you took uh, notes. If you have not, please go back. Remember to be looking for the examples of Hesed in the story. And remember to get your code letter for the test. We had the first two with the first two lectures, and now you're getting the third. Some of you may have already figured out what the code word is, but please do not forget, you do need to watch the lectures um, in order to do well in the quiz. So... Thank you for watching, and I hope that some of you will choose Ruth for your project.